How and when should you optimize your Facebook ads? What should you even be doing with ad creatives that you launch are getting ad spend, but aren't converting? Should you just kill them, let them run? Why is Facebook even allocating ad spend to them? I wanna answer all of these questions in today's video by sharing with you my optimization process for Facebook ads. If you're new to the channel, you don't yet know who I am. My name is Justin and I'm the founder at paidadvertising.com, an online marketing growth firm having profitably spent over $9.6 million on ads across 140 plus clients in the last few years years. Let's get straight into today's video. So I've got this Miro board opened up in front of me right now, and I want to show you my optimization process. Okay. So if you're unfamiliar with the way I run ads, I'm typically a very simple guy. I have one campaign per objective slash country region or persona. So I try and have as few campaigns as possible. And then I usually have dynamic creative tests under that. So like one ad concept per ad set. Okay. So so just quickly made this for you. It kind of looks like this. I got one campaign. I usually start with two to three dynamic creative tests that we are starting on an account. And then there's one concept per dynamic creative test. Okay, so this is not any type of ad set. This is an ad set that has the DC tier dynamic creative test little toggle turned on. So with that in mind, optimizations are more so done at the ad set level rather than the ad level itself. Okay, so going back right here, whenever you're launching a new ad, what you'll want to do is first and foremost, wait for at least three to seven days. Okay, it's just the general rule of thumb. I always wait three to seven days after launching a new ad. What makes it three? What makes it seven days? What makes it five or four or six? That's the amount of ad spend you have. Okay. So I'll typically make sure that my ad spends at least three days and two to three times my KPI before killing it. Okay. So I'll give you an example. Let's say I'm optimizing for an e-commerce brand. My new customer acquisition cost target is a hundred dollars. I'm going to let an ad or a DCT in itself here spend about 200 to three hundred dollars before I would kill it. OK, but with that said, I'd want it to spend at least three days live before even making that decision. So meaning even if my budget was three hundred dollar a day as an example, going to it, I would still wait a couple of days. Why? There's always some instability within the algorithm. Once you first launch an ad, it's as if it's adjusting its scope. It's trying to figure out like who's the right person to show this ad to you. So it's always a little unstable for the first day or two. After three days, usually it starts getting some stability right there. So with that in mind, that's why I kind of let it go for at least three days and or three times like my KPI as a general rule of thumb. So for some of you, if you have a much lower budget, so going back to the same example, if you know your new customer acquisition cost target is like $100 and you're only spending $20 a day, then you might have to let this live for five, six, seven days before you make a conclusive decision. OK, so I launch an ad with about three to seven days. And then if within or above KPI. So as an example, if my ad is outside of my KPI, OK, so I've let it spend now for three days. My KPI is $100 new customer acquisition cost, which I track that through triple wall as an example. OK, because you can't really track new customer acquisition costs on Facebook. You can only track CPA, right? So let's just hypothetically say I've launched this ad. It's now outside of my KPI, like it's not really hitting my results. Well, what I simply do is I would pause this ad. I would kill this. I would turn off the ad set. And then what I would do is I would add a reminder and add it to my graveyard pool. What I do is typically every three to six months, we launch what we call a graveyard campaign. Campaign. So what often happens is you'll launch an ad. It's not going to work well right now. It's going to get ad spend or perhaps very little ad spend allocated by Facebook. I typically, and this is important to know, we're testing two approaches at the agency right now, whether or not to leave this as a CBO, which is what we've been doing for about two years. And now we're trying this out as an ABO to see like, what if we force spend on a DCT? Still don't have a full conclusive test here, but regardless of it being an ABO or CBO, my point being sometimes with an ABO, you'll have an ad allocated ad spend, but it's without KPI, right? It's outside of your KPI or it's in a CBO, but it's barely getting any ad spend. So in both cases, I'm still going to throw it into a graveyard campaign within about three to six months. That way you make sure that you sift through your creatives. Like I always call the graveyard campaign like a sifting campaign, right? I imagine myself holding a big sift. And what I do is like, I just kind of shake it on the first round, right? And then there's going to be a few ads that are going to stick, right? And going to get good results. But some of them will be outside of my KPI, so it'll fall through. And I have a second sift below it that I shake a second time in three or six months. And then if it still fails after this, you know, second go at it in a few months, then I just deem this ad creative being unsuitable for the account. Like it's just not worth putting more money towards it. Now, going back to that, if on the flip side of my ad on the first go works, right? I just tested it 
a new creative, it works. Great. How do I optimize it, right? What do I do from there? Well, what I would do is one of two things. We're either going to leave it live right here. So we're either going to leave it live within this campaign uh, and or sometimes what we'll do is we'll extract either the post ID or simply duplicate the same ad creative or rebuild it from scratch. Like seriously, there's I think no right or wrong answer here. Post IDs have become very buggy lately. Like there's a lot of bugs with extracting a post ID where you'll get a, a weird bug, especially with e-commerce brands where you'll see like um, brackets that are going to say like product dot brand when you extract it and like there's no copy, no headline appearing. So a little weird. OK, so if that ever happens to you, either just leave it here or extract that. So rebuild this ad. And what I do is I typically now will have kind of two campaigns where I'm going to have this campaign right here, which is somewhat of a testing campaign. And then I'll have a second campaign where I might just extract or rebuild my winning ad. Typically, what I would do in the past is I would have like a main ad set right here. So I would have like an ad set here called main and I would simply move like all of my winning ads, you know, right here. And it would just start building all these winning ads under it. Now we're basically doing the same thing just in a separate campaign. So we think of it as like a main campaign and then we have like one ad set under it and then just all of our ads are below it. So it's just very similar structure, just slightly different in the sense that instead of having the folder at the ad set level, we have it at the campaign level. But all that to say, if we have an ad that is within KPI, we either leave it here or extract it to a scaling campaign. So with that being said, the pathway is slightly different because if you leave it in here and it's within KPI, then what I'm going to ask you to do is to simply scale the budget of this campaign. So assuming you're using a CBO campaign right here, look at the entire campaign's health and check is my entire campaign's health within or like outside of my KPI, right? If the answer is the entire campaign health and now the new ads that you launch are within KPI, scale it. Okay, scale it. That's it. How much to scale it? Maximum scale is by about 40% that you're going to want to do. What determines if you scale by 10 or 40%? I'll get to that in a second. OK, if you're going to go with me and you're going to use this kind of separate scaling campaign structure that we have, then it's pretty simple. Instead of just scaling this campaign as a whole, which I kind of recommend you honestly, like scaling within the same campaign, I found to be a little weird sometimes, like it doesn't really produce necessarily the best results. So what I would simply do is if you go through the campaign that we, I talked about earlier, where you have like this main, you know, ad set right here, and then you have like all your, you know, winning ads right below it, then whenever you've rebuilt a winning ad under this one, just make sure you wait for it to succeed. OK, if it succeed, if it keeps succeeding in your scaling campaign, then it's when you want to scale the budget of that said campaign. OK, so how much to scale it? 40 percent max every day. When you decide that based on ad spend, OK, based on ad spend. When it comes to that, there's no set rule. This is very much left to your discretion, I'd say. We will go to 40 percent, even a little bit above, not going to lie, for client accounts that are spending like 100, 200, 300 dollars a day, right? Going from 100 to 200 dollars a day isn't that big of a difference. Going from 200 to 250 or 300 dollars a day isn't really that big of a difference, right? Going from 1,000 to 2,000 a day, that starts to be quite a gap. Going Going from 10 grand to 20 grand a day, that's a big gap. You don't just want to turn up the spend and double it like this, right? So that's why I say like we typically try and follow a roughly 40%, you know, max gap. But typically, it's not going to be below 20%. Like if we scale an ad, we're going to scale it by at least 20%, right? So think about that range of being like 20 to 40% roughly scale, okay? Depending on the ad spend. Again, no set threshold, but like when I say a low budget, it means you're spending less than $1,000 a day, okay? If you're spending less than $1,000 a day, you can probably just double ad spend and it's really not going to change much on your account, okay? Now, if on the flip side, and I'm going to add that as a precision right here, if on the flip side, okay, um, you have an ad that isn't actually working like you've duplicated it and for some reason it just stops working which typically happens whenever you start putting more budget towards an ad it's like it had like a, a good performance in a small pocket of the audience but I made this graph I believe in a separate video where what I was saying is this right when you look at a audience it's typically as a pyramid at the top of the audience there's like a lot of people all these are like people that are interested and then the broader you go the less people are interested and whenever you start spending money on ads Facebook is by default going to show your ads to these people okay they're going to show your ads here. And then as you start increasing ad spend or scaling an ad or moving into like a scaling campaign, then what might happen is Facebook is going to go here. It's now going to start advertising to these people. So results may drop a little bit and it's going to advertise to these people. Results are going to drop even more so on and so forth. So either the more time an ad is live or the more like ad spend is being forced down an ad, the more like the broader it's going to go. And then to the kind of less interested or colder audiences, essentially this ad is going to appear too. OK, so if that's the case, the ad doesn't really scale. It doesn't work. You either descale its budget by 40% max again or maintain. You maintain it for a couple of days. And if the trend keeps on going, so typically like three days is enough to know whether or not to scale an 
ad, but the descale and ad, it's a little, it's, I would wait a little more, right? Because if you had a winning ad, it might just had a rough patch. Like if it's been winning consistently and then for three days in a row, it's just doing bad, wait a little bit. I would probably give it a full week before like making a full pause on this ad. So even when I'm going to precise here is like three to seven days later, pause an ad campaign. So I know I'm giving you a lot of room for play in this video and that's on purpose, right? Because what I want to be clear about right here is that whatever I'm showing you here, you can adapt that ever so slightly. I'm giving you guidelines. I'm giving you parameters, right? Three to seven days, depending on your budget. Scale or descale by 20 to 40% or maintain perhaps if an ad worked, but isn't working anymore, give it a few more days and then kill it. Very important to note though, whenever we pause an ad like as shown right here. So whenever I pause an ad, I do not move it into my graveyard campaign in three months. If an ad worked and then failed, I don't move it back into a graveyard campaign. Okay. Typically this ad gave the market what it had to give. So that's just kind of our way of looking at things. What we will do from time to time is, and I could have added that honestly in the chart right here, is we may turn it back on within three to six months. Okay. So you may actually want to turn this back on within three to six months within the same campaign it was on. Why? I've also seen that work. An ad that just stopped working. Like you got to give the market a break a little bit, right? It's like you've been hammering the market with the same marketing claim. You give them a little break. They kind of forget about you for two to three months and then you bring it back up and it's almost as if it's a fresh claim again because again people haven't seen that in a while i've seen ads being revived just with doing that okay so you may or may not want to turn this back on within three to six months as a general rule of thumb okay so when it comes to optimizing ads don't be emotional about it be logical right make decisions on a three to seven day basis when it comes to that when you have a winning ad in your kind of testing phase that you have initially just if it keeps on working, duplicate it either to a scaling ad set or a scaling campaign, either or, right? And whenever you made that duplication, make sure it keeps on performing. If it does, scale it up. If it doesn't, wait or descale. And on the flip side, if you launch the new test and it fails, kill it, but bring it back to life in three to six months. See if it just fails again. And if it does, just call it a day and then don't ever turn it back on again. And generally speaking, this is how we optimize budgets at the agency. This is kind of how we allocate ad spend towards our Facebook ads. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you made it all the way through, and you are an e-commerce or info product business wanting to work with a Facebook, Google, or TikTok ads partner, click the link down below and book on a call to speak with our team at pitadvertising.com today. And on that note, gonna wish you an amazing day. Check out other videos on the channel for some more useful marketing tips, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.